help you? Daddy, I have to record things. <laughs> Hello, future docs. How are you all doing? It's January, we're cold. A lot of you in this year's application cycle are either imploding from waiting so long for schools to get back to you, like I was at this point, or you've been accepted. Some of you in these situations might be thinking, no one talks about what to do in these absolutely interminable waiting periods. Like honestly, where are we, Disneyland on Labor Day? Pre-med years is like the line to even get in, and then submitting apps is like riding the Indiana Jones ride, and then pre-interview refreshing your email every 10 seconds for like months. And that's like waiting in line two hours for the churro, and then interview, which is like riding the teacups, and then post-interview refreshing your email every 10 seconds is like waiting in line for a Mickey pretzel. And then finally, finally, acceptance is like the magic happens parade at the end of the day at Disneyland, complete with fireworks. It's so kind of a long analogy, but stupid accurate. The point is the wait times are killer. And when I was going through this process, I did not have a great handle on what to do in order to be like looked on favorably by ad comms and maximize my chances of getting in. So in this video, we'll be going over three, 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 th three things to do if you're still waiting. And the one really important thing to do if you're already accepted. So make sure to watch till the end for that. Take notes of the part of this video that were helpful to you and let me know about it by commenting below or give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more stuff like it in the future. Now let's get rolling. If you have not been accepted yet, the first tip I have for you is to send probably letters of interest. The reason I say probably is because not all schools allow them. Some of them you put in your secondaries and that's it. Other ones allow you to send in update letters, letters of interest, and letters of intent. Now I'll explain what those are. They're different. Letters of interest and letters of intent are very different. Do not mix them up. This is where you can say, hey, I love this program for XYZ specific reasons, and I think that I can bring or offer ABC experience, skills, and perspectives, and whatever else to further the mission of the school, et cetera, et cetera. What I ham it up, be real, but do not be sappy. These can also include updates, but I'll get to the details of that, of the updates in a second. So letters of intent, on the other hand, only send a letter of intent to one school if you have a diehard favorite. And generally, you should only send one if you've already interviewed there. Think of a letter of intent kind of like a contract. You're basically saying, if you offer me an acceptance, I will take it. That's basically what you're saying when you send it, when you send a letter of intent. So if you send one, you better mean it. The reason letters of intent help is not only because you get another round of exposure with the admissions committees, but as long as it's well-written, thoughtful, and not too wordy, there is a little less guesswork involved for the admissions committee, which helps them. Think about it, I mean, they do hundreds of interviews. They all have to end up with a certain number of incoming medical students for that class, okay? Like for example, mine is 125 students. And this varies, this number varies. Some schools only accept 50, some have 300 plus people per class. And so these admissions committees have to do this mental gymnastics and calculations to figure out how many acceptances they need to extend in order to fill the class. Because not everybody that they send an acceptance to will obviously accept it. So if you tell them that they're your ride or die, that helps them because that takes a little bit of the guesswork out of it for them as far as estimating number of acceptances to extend. And plus, every school loves to feel wanted. Also, do not send update letters or letters of interest more often. I repeat, no more often than every six weeks minimum. If you send a ton, it just kind of gets annoying. A good timeline is if you've had two or more months of radio silence after sending in secondaries. And you have a real update, a real update, meaning like you got published or you got an award or a promotion or you climbed Everest or like whatever, go ahead. That is cool. Love that journey for you. So let's say you did that first letter. Let's say you did climb Everest and you sent that bomb letter and still radio silence after six more weeks. Then at that point, think about maybe sending another letter, but you gotta make it juicy, really good. For example, you could talk about how an experience that you had recently made you really appreciate 
a specific aspect of the school that you're writing this letter to, okay? Explain how, you know, what you've experienced recently since your last update letter has really made you even more motivated to study medicine at that particular school for a particular reason. Make sense? Great. All right. Now let's say you sent that second letter and you still have radio silence after six more weeks. Ugh. Unless you have another super awesome thing, better than Everest, and super applicable to the school to give an update on, just hang back. Just hang back. You've done good work. After two letters, it's up to them. Hang back. Last thing you want to do is come off super desperate. No one likes that. But what if after that juicy second awesome letter that you sent in, you get an interview? Well, first of all, Awesome, congratulations. Throw yourself a mask themed quarantine party because you have successfully risen above thousands of other applicants and have impressed the ad comms on a lot of levels. So then you go kill that interview, clearly. And then this is where I'll mention the second key thing to do if you have not yet been accepted. This is like post interview. So the second thing is to write a concise, sincere email or handwritten note. If you're really extra and crafty or whatever, send thank yous to all the people that interviewed you or interacted with you a lot. Students or faculty, as long as you have something sincere to say and thank them for, write one. You never know how many people are connected to the admissions community. Something that I wish I'd done was write down notes on everyone's names that I interacted with or that interviewed me. And something specific that they said that was either really helpful, really nice, or just otherwise awesome. And that I would want to say thank you for, for making it a good day, a good experience for me at that school. I wish I'd done this because I spent a long time after the interview trying to recall names and specific conversations so that I could write thank yous. Taking notes as I went along that day would have been way more efficient. As like part B of this tip, if there was someone that you were hoping to meet on interview day and you didn't get to meet, send them an email or a note saying so, offer to come back to campus again or offer to get on a call with them or set up a call with them at another time because you love the program and you wanna to talk to them for X, Y, Z specific reasons. I know someone who did this, went back to school a few weeks later, this was pre-COVID, met with the Dean and was offered an acceptance on the spot. Don't overdo this, don't try to force it, but if there is someone specific that you were hoping to meet for a specific reason and you didn't get to meet that person on an interview, this can be a super powerful tool. There we go. Obviously, this is different the cycle with online interviewing, but you can definitely still do this, except now you can do it from the comfort of your home without spending a dime. Now for tip number three, for those who have not been accepted yet to medical school. Once you have done thing one and thing two, and you still don't have an acceptance, don't dink around, prepare for the worst case scenario, Reevaluate your apps. Work on strengthening your weak points. Read a book. Volunteer some more in something that you love. Schools love that. Above all else, do not get down on yourself. I wanna make that very clear. Over 60% of matriculating medical students now have taken at least one gap year, okay? I'm gonna put the stat, where I pulled that stat from, I'm gonna put the link to it in the description so you can take a look if you want. I took two and a half gap years total for perspective, I'm, but I mean, that's a whole story for another video. It's so easy to compare to your friends, like, oh, why did they get in and why did I not at that one school? We both applied, I did the same things, we're, all, we're both great, but I didn't get in. Try to break it all down into some meaningful reason why you might still be waiting on schools to get back to you. A lot of it just, it's not necessarily your app. Sometimes it's the right ad com member reviewing the right app on the right day. There's more nuance to it than people think. Oh, it just got really dark all of a sudden. Spooky. If you're worried that this cycle is just not gonna pan out for you, it's okay. I repeat, it is okay. Take it as a chance to grow as a person and make sure to showcase that growth on your next round of apps. Admissions committees love to see that. Now onto those who've been accepted. Yay, so excited for you. It's gonna be wild, but so worth it. And so the finale here, the number one thing that I wish I'd done or taken seriously after getting accepted was to actually freaking relax. Was to, relax, seriously, that was it. I wish that I had truly enjoyed 
that accomplishment. So take it for what it is. You got an acceptance to a medical school in the United States or multiple acceptances, in which case, holy Moses, I wish that I had not felt the need to prepare or to pre-study for med school. That was a waste of my time. If you've been accepted to medical school, you have beat the odds and earned a spot in one of the most rigorous academic programs in the entire world. I don't say that lightly. It's literally like Olympic gymnastics meets astrophysics meets Navy SEAL training but like, but for your brain, that's what it feels like at least. And then if you, if you don't, if you don't believe me, just watch this video that I will link right here where I mentally face plant every day for the first week of second semester of medical school. Okay. It's rough. And that wasn't even, that wasn't even a finals week. You can't pre-study for this life. I made that mistake of thinking that, oh, I should, I should get a head start on anatomy. No. This is the next level. It's impossible to pre-study for this, okay? Do not do that. The best way to quote unquote like prepare for school other than like, you know, getting in is to chill out and take this downtime to develop, important, great eating, sleeping, and exercising habits. I can't stress that enough. Those will serve you well through med school. He just wants scratches. Anyway get in good habits, ones that will stick and that are sustainable, so that when med school hits you like three tons of bricks, as it does, then you will be ready with those ingrained habits that will help you stay sane and happy, or happier through the information overload that is first semester of med school. You turn the dial from high strong pre-med mode to vacation mode. I truly wish that I had enjoyed my time off more and cannot stress this tip of all tips to you enough. And that's it. Oh, sorry, I stopped scratching. Three tips for those that are in the med school application limbo and one a very important one for those that have gotten in. And this is all stuff that I wish I had known or known more fully during this process. I hope this is helpful to you pre-meds and incoming med students. Comment and tell me what your experience has been like during this application process because it's double next level psycho, phase two psycho with it being COVID and, and online interviews and everything. But I kinda wanna hear about it. I wanna know what it's like for you guys. Let me know if you end up trying one of these tips. I wanna hear about it. DM me, Instagram or Twitter. My handle is at heymarls. Do not forget to like and subscribe below. And if you haven't already watched, my other videos or playlists, click on the blurbs at the end and that will take you right to them. With that, just wanna say thank you so, so, so much for watching and see you next week.